What is an acid base indicator? It is actually a weak arginous acid or a base. That means it ionizes in aqueous medium like this. The ionized form and the non-ionized form of the indicator have two distinct colors. Here this part is constant. So it is obvious that this ratio depends solely on the pH of the medium. For the time being we will take up acidic indicators only because most common acid base indicators are weak acids. For acidic indicators in acidic medium the H plus ion concentration is more and this equilibrium as per Lee Chatelier's principle shifts to the left and the color of the non-ionized form predominate. In basic medium the concentration of H plus ion is less and the equilibrium shifts to the right and the color of the ionized form predominate. This can also be understood from this equation. In acid medium pH is less than pK indicator. So this become less than zero and the non-ionized form predominate. In basic medium pH is more than pK indicator. So this become more than zero and the ionized form predominate. At pH equal to pK indicator the ionized and non-ionized form have equal concentration. For a particular color to predominate the species responsible for that particular color should be at least 5 to 10 times greater than the species responsible for the other color. As for example methyl orange indicator where the pK indicator equal to 3.7 if the ionized form concentration is 5 times greater than non-ionized form, then the pH is 4.4 and the alkaline color predominate. If the non-ionized form concentration is 5 times greater, then the pH becomes 3.1 and acid color predominates. This is called the pH range at which the indicator operates. For phenophthalein, pH range is 8.3 to 10 choice of indicators for acid base titrations. Strong acid versus strong base. Take 100 milliliter of 0.1 molar HCl in a conical flask. Titrate it with 0.1 molar NaOH solution which is called the titrant. These are the volume of NaOH added in milliliter during titration and these are the resulting pH. Before neutralization the pH is calculated as follows. Volume of NaOH added equal to 25 milliliter. Total volume equal to 125 milliliter. Volume of HCl not neutralized is equal to 75 milliliter which is equivalent to 7.5 millimoles which again corresponds to 0 0.06 molar concentration which has a pH equal to 1.22. After neutralization pH is calculated as follows. NaOH added equal to 125 milliliter. Total volume equal to 225 milliliter. Volume of NaOH remaining after neutralization equal to 25 milliliter which is equivalent to 2.5 millimoles which again corresponds to 0.011 molar concentration which has a pH equal to 12.04. Now this is called the titration curve. In this curve this vertical region is where the equivalence point lies midway. So an indicator in this pH range is suitable. We can see th here that both methyl orange and phenophthalene indicator is suitable in titration of strong acid with a strong base. Now let us see the titration curve of a weak acid. 100 milliliter of 0.1 molar acetic acid having a dissociation constant equal to 1.73 into 10 to the power minus 5. Here acetic acid ionizes like this. The initial moles per liter is this that is before dissociation. After dissociation the moles per liter is this. Here x is neglected because x is very much less than 0.1 and X is the concentration of H plus ions is calculated to be 0 0.0013 which correspond to a pH equal to 2.88. The pH at this region is calculated by henderson hasselbalch equation because by adding NOH sodium acetate is formed and acetic acid acetate buffer is formed. 
When 25 ml of NaOH is added, that is 2.5 millimoles of acetate ion is formed and 7.5 millimoles of acetic acid remain. The pH is therefore calculated to be 4.28. The Henderson-Hasselbalch equation does not work when we have added very less amount of NaOH, say 1 milliliter. This is because the already dissociated A- concentration cannot be neglected when compared to the A- concentration due to salt formed by this reaction. Henderson-Hasselbalch equation also do not hold good when the calculated pH is close to 7. For example, when 99 milliliter of NaOH has been added, the calculated pH is 6.75. In this case, we have to add the H plus ions got from the ionization of water, which no longer can be neglected. Calculation of pH at equivalence point. At the equivalence point, no acid remains. Only acetate ion is there, which act as a base. Initial moles of acid was 10 millimoles, so after total conversion of acetic acid to acetate ion, there is 10 millimoles of acetate ion formed. The total volume is 200, so the concentration is 0 0.05 molar. Acetate ion acts like a base having dissociation constant Kb equal to Kw by Ka, which is equal to 5.78 into 10 to the power minus 10. Here Y, which is the concentration of OH minus ions, can be neglected because it is much less than 0.05. The concentration of OH minus ions calculated to be equal to 5.38 into 10 to the power minus 6, which correspond to a pH of 8.73. Remember that this equilibrium is considered at the equivalence point only and not before that, because the presence of acid shifts this equilibrium towards the left. We can clearly see that the vertical line crossing the equivalence point falls in the range of phenolphthalein and not methyl orange. So the suitable indicator in this case is phenolphthalein. In case of titration of a weak base with strong acid, the curve is like this. The calculations are more or less the same and the end point of titration, that is the vertical line crossing the equivalence point, falls within the range of methyl orange indicator and not phenolphthalein indicator. Now let us come to diprotic acids. One mole of diprotic acid has two moles of H plus ions which dissociate in steps like this. The hydrogen ions got from the dissociation of the first equilibrium influences the second equilibrium to shift towards the left and very less hydrogen ions are available due to this second equilibrium. That is why it is believed that diprotic acids dissociate in steps. In reality, everything depends on the value of K1 and K2. First, let us take the example of sulfuric acid. In the case of sulfuric acid, K1 is very high and the first dissociation gets almost completed. K2 is also not very low. When you titrate sulfuric acid by NOH, the OH- ions neutralize H plus ions caught from both these reactions at the same time. Note that the pH of 0.1 molar H2S4 is not actually the pH due to 0.2 moles of H plus ions that theoretically lies in it, but a little less as the second dissociation is not completed. We calculate the pH in this region of the titration curve like this. When the titrant added is 25 milliliter, it neutralizes 12.5 milliliter of H2S4 because two moles of NOH neutralize one mole of H2S4. Therefore, 87.5 milliliter or 8.75 millimoles of acid still remain, which is equivalent to 0 0.07 molar concentration. So the second dissociation is like this. We calculate X from here and get the pH like this. From the titration curve, it is clear that the curve is similar to the titration curve of a strong monoprotic acid like H. Here, the vertical region of the curve falls within the pH range of both phenolphthalein and methyl orange indicator. So, any one can be used. Now, let us come to another diprotic acid like oxalic acid, where K1 equal to 5.6 into 10 to the power minus 2 and K2 equal to 5.4 into 10 to the power minus 5. Here, K1 is 1000 times bigger than K2. So the pH of 0.1 molar oxalic acid is calculated on the basis of the first dissociation only. 
So before the first equivalence point which happens when 100 milliliter of 0.1 molar in a wage has been added. The H plus ions got from the first dissociation is neutralized. We neglect the H plus ions got from the second dissociation. However, when we go very close to the first equivalence point, that is when we have added 99 milliliter of NOH, we cannot neglect the H plus ions got from the second dissociation. At the first equivalence point, the pH is 2.78 and it is believed that now only HA minus ions remain which may be thought of as weak acid and the curve from here on moves like what we have already seen in the case of thastic acid. The point to be noted that there is no clear vertical region at the first equivalence point although there is an inflection or change in curvature over here. The end point therefore will not be clear over here. However, at the second equivalence point there is a wide enough vertical region which falls under the pH range of phenolphthalein indicator. Now let us discuss about another diprotic acid namely carbonic acid. This acid has very low dissociation constants and also limited solubility. Most of it remains as gaseous CO2 and the solubility in aqueous medium follow Henry's law. The salt of this diprotic acid sodium carbonate can be found in pure form which is easily soluble in water and we can use it as a primary standard base to find strength of acids by titration. NaOH and KOH are deliquescent and cannot be used for the purpose. Now if 100 milliliter of 0.1 molar Na2CO3 is titrated with 0.1 molar HCl then the titration curve is as follows. During the first part of the titration that is before the first equivalence point this reaction occurs and at this part that is before the second equivalence point this reaction occurs and CO2 is given off. Let us try to calculate the pH at different points during titration. pH at A. Here Na2CO3 is only present and no HCl has been added. Na2CO3 ionizes like this. The carbonate ion acts as a base like this. It dissociates in water giving hydroxide ions. The Kb value is Kw divided by K2 which is equal to 1.786 into 10 to the power minus 4. The concentration of hydroxide ions are calculated to be 4.138 into 10 to the power minus 3 and the corresponding pH is calculated to be 11.62. pH at point B which is halfway to the first equivalence point. At this point concentration of carbonate ions is equal to the concentration of bicarbonate ions and the concentration of hydroxide ions become equal to Kb which corresponds to a pH is equal to 10.25. pH at C which is the first equivalence point. Here there is no carbonate ions left. Only bicarbonate ions remain. Now bicarbonate ions can accept as well as supply protons. Totons accepted are equal to the H2CO3 concentration and is equal to this. Protons supplied are equal to the concentration of carbonate ions and is equal to this. Therefore, protons remaining is equal to protons supplied minus protons accepted. This is equal to square root of K1 into K2 which correspond to a pH is equal to 8.31. pH at point D which is halfway to second equivalence point. Here bicarbonate ion concentration is equal to carbonic acid concentration and hydroxide ion concentration is equal to Kb where Kb in this case is equal to Kw divided by K1. The pH is calculated to be 6.37. However, the calculated pH does not necessarily match with the pH if the titration were to be carried out by the help of pH meter due to the following reasons. CO2 is always being liberated and the concentration of H2CO3 is not the same as predicted. Whatever amount of H2CO3 is soluble contributes protons and affects the pH. pH at point E which is the second equivalence point. There is only H2CO3 present at this stage and the corresponding pH is 3.85. But it may be higher as because limited solubility of H2CO3. 
This of course does not affect the end point seriously because this vertical part of the curve widens. Therefore at the first equivalence point phenolphthalein indicator will be suitable and it will only measure half carbonate concentration. Methyl orange is suitable indicator at the second equivalence point.